Hello, welcome to the multi-user virtual environment known as Second Life. My name is Katie K. Ariel here in Second Life. In real life, I'm Kathy Kaiser and a Senior Manager for Academic Outreach and Engagement at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Right now, I'm standing in front of the old well on our virtual campus. The designers of this campus decided to include many of the iconic buildings so well known to any Tar Heel. The old well, the Bell Tower, Wilson Library, the Forest Theater, Memorial Hall, etc. Historic photographs of this nation's oldest public university are displayed in context at Old East and Old West, but the 18th century South Building has a very state-of-the-art emergency situation room in case the physical campus ever becomes isolated. Just as Kathy uses her physical body to get around in real life, KDK uses her avatarian body to travel in this realm. But unlike real life, in Second Life, you can fly or even teleport to where you need to go. Let's fly around the UNC Chapel Hill virtual campus to see a few of the sites. While smaller than the real life campus, the Second Life campus contains more than 80 acres of 3D real estate. Some of this virtual land is awaiting development, but more than 60% is being used for various projects. And unlike physical real estate, the sky is not the limit when dealing with a virtual environment. Buildings can hover hundreds of meters in the sky, such as this replica of Davis Library that is being used to develop possible remodeling prototypes. Many activities that would be difficult or impossible in a physical setting can now be achieved. Students can visit sites miles away from the physical campus. This is a replica of the Women's Hospital in Greensboro. School of Pharmacy students can, for example, familiarize themselves with the specialized equipment in the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit before traveling there for their internships. Students can also engage in role-playing scenarios to develop patient interviewing skills. Virtual campuses can augment the physical classroom. Students can participate in small group discussions without needing breakout rooms. Here, a few students are discussing a reading assignment in a chat isolation tree. The tree affords enough separation between the groups so that crosstalk is not a problem. The instructor can even monitor each of the discussions for use in full class discussions later on. Students can virtually meet with faculty for office hours, facilitating a high level of student-teacher interaction even when one or both are away from the campus. Second Life also facilitates the display of student work, which can be discussed in groups. Student projects built in Second Life require unique utilization of informational architecture to display data. Students in this group project decided to display Iraq war fatalities in a reverent yet easily accessible way. YouTube has shown a new video literacy is being born. Video capture is built into the Second Life viewer and students can create machine animations or machinimas in much the same way as traditional video production, but without the costly overhead of video camera equipment. The video you are now viewing is an example of what can be produced. In this presentation, we have shown some of the different approaches to creating educational space in a multi-user virtual environment. We hope you agree with us that this is a place of innovation and collaboration. At the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, we have leveraged the unique capabilities of Second Life to provide innovative instructional workspaces and educational surrogates for environments available at any time and any place.